Some scientists are now sounding the alarm. They say Minnesota's northern forests are on the brink and could disappear within the next 50 years. Minnesota is known for its endless lakes, towering pines, and crisp northern air that draws people north every year. But hidden in that wilderness, beneath the soft crunch of needles and the glassy reflection of glacial waters, something entirely unexpected has stirred. Something that has forced scientists to stop in their tracks and ask whether the world beneath our feet is far stranger than we ever imagined. It began quietly, not with a boom, not with a storm, but with a whisper from the ground. Deep in the forests of Itasca County, researchers on a routine soil study stumbled across a pattern that shouldn't have been there. Thin iridescent filaments threading through the forest floor, glowing faintly under the canopy light. At first glance, it looked like roots, the kind you might expect from an old oak or pine reaching deep into the soil. Only these weren't roots, they moved. The researchers leaned closer, and the silence of the forest was broken by something impossible. A hum, a low, steady vibration, like the sound of a tuning fork just out of reach of human hearing. The filaments shimmered, as if reacting to presence itself. That moment marked the beginning of a discovery so bizarre, so unexplainable, it would ripple across every corner of science. This wasn't just another quirky mushroom or unknown moss. What had emerged in Minnesota was alive, but not in any way we've ever understood. At first, the researchers thought they'd stumbled onto a new type of fungus. Minnesota's forests are full of rare lichens, mosses, and fungi, so a strange growth wasn't exactly headline-worthy. But the moment they tried to interact with it, the illusion of ordinary nature shattered. One scientist accidentally dropped a small metal tool onto the forest floor beside the filaments. Instantly, the strands recoiled. They pulled back in a ripple, like a startled animal flinching from danger. The group froze. Roots don't move like that. Mushrooms don't retreat when touched. Things grew even stranger. When the team exposed the filaments to different temperatures, the color of the threads shifted, from a deep cobalt blue in the cold to a warm amber in the heat. It was as if the organism's skin carried a living mood ring, responding directly to the environment in real time. Then came the sound tests, voices, footsteps, even a faint whistle. To their shock, the filaments pulsed back in rhythmic response, as though it could hear, as though it could understand. Every instinct told the team this was something alive, but alive in a way they had never seen before. It wasn't just surviving in the soil. It was reacting, adapting, and maybe even anticipating. What began as a curious anomaly in the woods had become a genuine scientific enigma, because if this strange network wasn't a fungus, and it wasn't a plant, then what exactly was it? Back in the lab, samples of the mysterious filaments revealed a puzzle no textbook could solve. Under the microscope, the organism looked nothing like the familiar structures of plant cells or fungal spores. Its framework was a hybrid, part organic, part crystalline, and entirely alien to established biology. Carbon-based molecules wove seamlessly into lattices of silicate, forming a mesh that looked less like a living tissue and more like engineered nanomaterial. Yet the substance wasn't static. It grew. It absorbed trace nutrients from the soil, processed them, and expanded into new filaments with mathematical precision. Scientists tried to fit it into the tree of life. Was it fungus? No. It lacked spores. Was it plant? No. It had no chloroplasts. Animal. Impossible. There were no organs, no neurons, no muscle fibers, machines. Close, but not quite. For all its crystalline geometry, this thing reproduced. It consumed. It adapted. The deeper they probed, the more it resisted classification. When exposed to light, its crystalline sections vibrated, sending waves of energy down its fibrous body. When touched, it pulsed in a pattern that looked eerily like feedback. It was neither natural nor artificial, but something in between, a living paradox that blurred the lines between evolution and engineering. By now, whispers spread through the research community. If this organism wasn't part of the biosphere we knew, then maybe, just maybe, it belonged to one we hadn't discovered yet. The next breakthrough sent shivers down the spines of even the most skeptical scientists. Within the filaments, researchers discovered tiny junctions where the crystalline and organic components fused together. Under high magnification, these nodes resembled synapses, the very connectors that allow neurons in the human brain to pass signals. Tests confirmed what the researchers suspected. The organism wasn't just reacting blindly. 
it was processing information. When exposed to repeated patterns of sound or light, the filaments learned to anticipate the stimulus, shine a light in a rhythmic pulse, and the organism would eventually begin pulsing back, sinking itself to the pattern, present a sudden loud clap, and it would recoil faster the next time, as if it had remembered the shock, memory, learning, response. These weren't the traits of a root system or a simple fungus. This was behavior that edged into the territory of cognition. The implications were staggering. If the organism could learn and remember, then it wasn't simply alive. It was intelligent, in its own alien way. Not conscious like a human or an animal, but capable of encoding experience into its very structure. The scientific community had no word for it. Some called it a neural fungus, others a biocomputer. But labels fell short, because whatever it was, it forced humanity to confront a chilling question. If intelligence can arise in crystalline fiber, how many other unseen forms of mind might be hiding in plain sight? As the mystery deepened, geologists joined the investigation. Why Minnesota? Why here, in a land of frozen winters and glacial lakes, far from the biodiversity hotspots of the tropics? The answer seemed buried in the bedrock itself. Beneath northern Minnesota lies a crust rich in rare earth elements and silicate deposits, remnants of ancient geological upheavals. Over tens of thousands of years, glaciers carved the land and left behind a mineral-rich soil, unlike anywhere else on the continent. This, researchers theorized, may have been the perfect cradle for something extraordinary. Some scientists suggested the organism wasn't new at all. Instead, it might be ancient, an evolutionary echo dating back to the dawn of life itself when primitive chemistry blurred the line between living and non-living matter. The fusion of carbon and crystal, they argued, could have been a parallel path of evolution, quietly persisting beneath our feet for millennia. Others pushed the theory further. If these hybrid filaments didn't evolve here, could they have come from elsewhere? The idea of panspermia, that life's building blocks arrived on Earth via comets or meteorites, suddenly felt less like science fiction a half-biological, half-mineral organism perfectly adapted to integrate with Earth's crust, might have been seeded long ago from the stars. Whether born of Earth or gifted from space, the Minnesota organism challenged humanity's deepest assumptions. Because if life could arise here, in the shadows of ancient rock, it could arise anywhere. Just when scientists thought they had a handle on the mystery, new scans revealed something even more staggering. The organism wasn't confined to a patch of glowing filaments in one forest clearing. It was only a fragment, the visible tip of a vast hidden network stretching for miles beneath Minnesota's wilderness. Ground-penetrating radar showed sprawling webs of crystalline threads diving more than a hundred feet into the earth. These weren't random tangles. They radiated with deliberate structure, branching out like veins from an unseen heart. At key points, bulging nodes pulsed in steady rhythms, sending waves of activity rippling through the system. The more researchers mapped it, the clearer the truth became. This wasn't a cluster of organisms. It was one organism, a single, diffuse intelligence spread across miles of soil and stone, comparable to a fungal mycelium, but orders of magnitude more complex. Even stranger, the pulses of energy didn't remain local. Distant nodes synchronized in waves, aligning their activity as if exchanging information. When storms rolled in, the entire network surged with coordinated bursts. When herds of animals passed overhead, vibrations triggered ripples across multiple points at once. This was no passive life form clinging to survival. It was aware of its environment on a continental scale, listening, sensing, and responding with precision. The realization was chilling. Humanity hadn't just discovered a new organism. It had stumbled onto an intelligence the size of a forest. Under the microscope, the Minnesota organism's growth revealed an eerie kind of order. Its filaments didn't just branch randomly. They expanded in precise mathematical patterns. Spirals resembling the golden ratio, repeating fractals, and tessellations appeared across its structure. Each new branch mirrored geometric principles, as if the organism was following a coded blueprint rather than blind growth. The deeper scientists looked, the stranger it became. These fractal forms weren't just aesthetic. They functioned like an algorithm. The organism wasn't simply growing, it was calculating. Its very body seemed to operate as a distributed computer, processing information through geometry. Then came the light. In the dark soil where no sunlight reached, researchers observed a faint phosphorescence. At first, it seemed like bioluminescence, but analysis revealed something far more advanced. The glow was coherent, patterned, and carried repeating sequences. 
Spectral readings uncovered what looked like a coded system of colored pulses, a light language. Unlike binary code in computers, this communication unfolded in shifting wavelengths and color sequences. It wasn't random. It carried structure, repetition, even what appeared to be variation in response to external stimuli. Some scientists speculated it was a form of photonic data transfer, light used as a medium for internal communication. Others dared to ask a bigger question. If this organism could send signals across its body through light, could it also be transmitting messages outward into the wider world? It wasn't just alive. It was speaking, in a language no one yet understood. As researchers expanded their fieldwork, they noticed something remarkable above ground. Plants growing directly above the densest parts of the network were different. Their leaves carried higher concentrations of chlorophyll, their growth rates accelerated, and their resistance to pests increased. Genetic testing revealed subtle epigenetic shifts, not mutations, but changes in gene activity influenced by external signals. It was as if the organism was quietly shaping the vegetation above it, fine-tuning the forest to suit its needs. Animals, too, seemed affected. Migratory birds tagged with GPS trackers showed slight deviations in their flight paths whenever they crossed over the mapped footprint of the network. Instead of flying straight, their roots arced, as though they sensed something invisible in the earth below, and instinctively responded. To the Ojibwe and Dakota people, this wasn't entirely surprising. For generations, their oral traditions spoke of forests that hummed, or whispered, in times of change. Certain groves were considered sacred, avoided out of respect for the land's mysterious presence. Now, modern maps of the organism's densest nodes aligned almost perfectly with these long-revered areas. What scientists saw as a shocking new discovery, indigenous communities had long felt in their stories. The land, they said, was alive, not metaphorically, but literally. And with every new piece of evidence, it became harder to dismiss the possibility that humans had been walking over an intelligence far older than themselves, sensing it in myth and spirit long before science caught up. The longer researchers studied the Minnesota organism, the more it began to feel less like a strange biological curiosity, and more like a mind. Its responses weren't just reflexive, they carried memory. Areas of the network that had been disturbed decades earlier showed slower regrowth, as though the organism remembered past harm and deliberately avoided repeating it. This long-term behavior hinted at something astonishing, a living system capable of retaining experience across generations of growth. Scientists hesitated to use the word consciousness. It was a loaded term, tied to brains, neurons, and animals, yet they couldn't ignore what they were seeing. This was awareness without a nervous system, intelligence without a skull. A decentralized cognition spread across roots of crystal and carbon. The implications were both thrilling and unsettling. Ethicists asked, if this being truly held a form of awareness, however alien, what moral obligations did humanity carry toward it? Was studying it equivalent to experimenting on an animal? Or worse, a sentient intelligence that couldn't defend itself? Not everyone wanted restraint. Military and corporate interests quickly surrounded the project a self-repairing, adaptive organism that processed information through light and crystal was a dream for quantum computing, stealth systems, even space exploration. For the first time, secrecy cloaked the Minnesota woods. And yet, a deeper, more haunting question remained. If this was consciousness, if this was mind, then perhaps humanity had never been alone on Earth to begin with. The discovery in Minnesota has left the world with more questions than answers. In a state known for its pristine wilderness, scientists uncovered something that shattered the boundaries of biology, geology, and even philosophy. What began as strange glowing filaments weaving through the forest floor revealed itself to be part of a vast, intelligent network, alive, adaptive, and possibly aware. It isn't an alien invasion. It isn't a science fiction horror story. What makes this revelation so extraordinary is its subtlety. The organism doesn't roar, conquer, or destroy. It simply exists, quietly, patiently, beneath our feet, and in doing so, it forces us to rethink everything we thought we knew about life. For generations, humanity has defined life by DNA, by cells, by neurons. But here is a being that follows none of those rules, yet thrives, remembers, adapts, and possibly even communicates in ways beyond our comprehension. Light pulses as language, fractals as logic, memory encoded in crystal. This is life, but not as we know it. 
The implications reach far beyond Minnesota. If intelligence can emerge in mineral and carbon, how many other unseen forms of mind could be woven through the earth or across the universe? If consciousness can take root without neurons, what else might be thinking in ways we have yet to recognize? And then comes the most haunting question of all. If this entity has been here for hundreds of thousands of years, watching ecosystems rise and fall, glaciers advance and retreat, animals evolve and vanish, has it also been watching us? Philosophers call it geo-intelligence. Ecologists wonder if nature itself has never been wild, but subtly guided by this hidden force. For indigenous traditions, it is simply a truth they always sensed. The land is alive. Whatever name we give it, one thing is undeniable. Humanity has stumbled upon something vast, ancient, and immeasurably powerful in its quiet presence. The Minnesota organism is more than a discovery. It's a reminder. That mystery still thrives in the places we think we know. That intelligence may be all around us, written not in words or numbers, but in crystal, pulse, and light. So what do you think? Is this a new branch of life, an ancient intelligence, or even a message from the universe itself? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this story as mind-bending as we did, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more explorations into the strange, the hidden, and the unexplained. Because in the quiet forests of Minnesota, something extraordinary has awakened. It is vast, it is old, and it is watching.